Going into this past weekend, Oregon State was set to be playing in one of the biggest games in decades. No, it wasn't going to be the biggest upset, it wasn't going to get the most national attention, or it wasn't some super hyped up game. It was a chance to get to 10 wins. This is something that Oregon State fans would have thought was completely impossible just a couple of years ago, as Gary Anderson was awful, as a string of bad luck went through Corvallis over the last decade, and it looked like the Beavers program was dead in the water, and that they would never return to any sort of success. When they eventually hired Jonathan Smith, no one around the country really batted an eye, and no one thought this guy would ever be anything. Some thought maybe he could make a bowl game, or at least make them competitive, but no one was batting an eye at Oregon State. Their eyes were always on Oregon. Except, this past season has been insane for Oregon State, but it's not been new. Jonathan Smith has been building up the Beavers program over the last few years, is taking them to new heights, and then they just thrashed Florida, giving them their first 10 win season in seemingly forever, and now the Oregon State football program is back on the map. In today's video, I want to talk about the impossible rise of Oregon State, how Jonathan Smith built this program from the ashes, how this past season is gone, my thoughts for the future, and just to share this cool story. But before we get into it, we are so close to 100k, so be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you want to support today's video, turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. Now, let's talk about the rise of Oregon State football. Going back in time, Oregon State's never really been this big time program. In 1997, Mike Riley would take over as the head coach, going 3-8 and 5-6. and In 1999, Dennis Erickson would take over, and he led Oregon State to one of its best seasons ever. They went 7-5 in 1999, and then 11-1 in 2000, where they ended up winning the Fiesta Bowl and got as high as number 4 in the country. This was arguably the best season in Oregon State football history, but they'd end up going back to their losing ways. They'd go 5-6 in 2001, before going 8-5 in 2002. Mike Riley took the Chargers job, which opened it up for Erickson, before he would go on to become the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers. Back-to-back -back big coaches had been poached by the NFL, but Riley would make his return and became the best coach in school history. In his first seven years, the Oregon State Beavers made six bowl games and were ranked at one point during the season three times. The back half of his tenure was a little bit more rusty. He had back-to-back -back losing seasons in 2010 and 2011 before a breakout nine-win season in 2012. After that, the team would go 7-6 in 2013 before a 5-7 record in 2014. Mike Riley was seemingly starting to lose his touch, but honestly, he probably could have stayed there and they probably would have built a statue for him at some point if he kept on going. Except, this is when he got poached. Nebraska was tired of 9-win Pelini, so they went out and hired Mike Riley, and he ended up flaming out pretty quickly at Nebraska. The Beavers still made a trade with a red and white Big Ten West school, as they got Gary Anderson from Wisconsin. Many thought this was a step down, and that is exactly what happened. Anderson was awful. In 2015, the Beavers went 2-10 with an 0-9 mark in the Pac-12, and then in 2016, they weren't much better. They went 4-8. 2017 was even more ridiculous as the team went 1-11 and once again went winless in conference play, and then Anderson decided to resign, and Corey Hall was the interim head coach. There's a lot of speculation about Anderson's tenure there, but one thing that can be said for certain is it was a complete disaster, and it almost looked like it buried the Oregon State football program for good. At the time when Anderson resigned, he left all $12 million of his buyout behind, which was very unprecedented. He claims it was out of principle, and he wanted to help Oregon State out for the future. There are obviously some other theories about all that, but either way, Anderson couldn't win, he was getting extremely fed up with it, and he said he was trying to fix a culture that wouldn't change. Unfortunately for Oregon State, this was a hire that could have put them under for good. In 2015, they were the 50th school in the country in terms of athletic revenue, which was the second lowest in the Pac-12. Oregon State doesn't have super great history, they aren't great at recruiting, they're the little brother to Oregon, and they were just always near the bottom of the conference, so it was going to be an uphill battle. They would have to go outside of the box for their next hire, and honestly, they struck gold. They hired Jonathan Smith. All Beavers fans are more than familiar with Jonathan Smith, and that was before he was ever a coach. That's because he was one of them. He was quarterback from 1998 to 2001, and will go down as one of their best quarterbacks ever. He ended up getting to throw to players such as Chad Johnson and TJ Hushmanzada, and led the Beavers to that 11-1 record. After his career was over, he took a GA job with Mike Riley before he became the quarterback's coach at Idaho. From there, he steadily moved up. He went from the quarterback's coach at Montana to eventually settling on Boise State. He was part of Chris Peterson's staff, so when he took the job at Washington, he now became the offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach for them. He was there for three years and got an opportunity to coach Jake Browning. He really helped Washington's offense, got a chance to compete in the college football playoff, 
coached up Jake Browning and was starting to gain a lot of experience and traction in the coaching world. That's why when Anderson departed, there were a lot of rumors that Smith would come home and take the job. That is exactly what would happen. At the time, it wasn't a flashy hire by any means, but Oregon State fans knew this was the guy for the job because he actually loved the place. He never had the flashiest arm or was the best quarterback in the country, but he had grit and was always a student of the game. Mike Riley always talked about how Smith was going to be a tremendous coach, so when he was hired, he put together an impressive plan, and the Oregon State fan base was excited for him. Except, he'd now have an uphill battle, and how would he do in year one? Well, in 2018, Jake Luton would become the starting quarterback, you'd have Jamar Jefferson at running back, and then you'd have star receiver Isaiah Hodgins. The Beavers struggled in year one, as they'd end up going 2-10. Their only wins came against Southern Utah and on the road against Colorado, but the team was slowly getting more competitive. In 2019, Luton would return as the starting quarterback. You had a nice trio of B.J. Baylor, Jamar Jefferson, and Artavis Pierce at running back, and Isaiah Hodgins blossomed into a future NFL receiver. There was more talent on the offense now. This definitely showed as they were a lot more competitive. They ended up beating Cal Poly for their first win before they'd win three straight road games. This already showed a lot of promise for them, but they would need to win just two of their last four games and they could make a bowl game in year one. They would end up getting a one point victory over Arizona State before they had a couple of heartbreakers. They lost 54 to 53 against Washington State, lost by three against Stanford, and lost by three against Hawaii. And because of this, the Beavers ended up going five and seven and missed a bowl game. This was super unfortunate, but people were starting to notice Jonathan Smith. In 2020, there were some changes to the offense. Jake Luton had now gone off to the NFL, and former Nebraska and blue chip recruit Tristan Jebbia would take over as the starting quarterback. He'd unfortunately get hurt, and Chance Nolan would also get an opportunity to play. Jamar Jefferson led the team in rushing for the third straight year, and the team had eight different receivers with over 100 yards receiving. It was truly a balanced offense. The Beavers were still picked to finish fifth in the North, and I guess that was for good reason. They ended up losing back-to-back -back games against Washington State and Washington in Week 1 and Week 2, and then they'd have nice wins. They beat Cal at home before an upset over number 15, Oregon. This was the biggest win of the Jonathan Smith era to this point, and many were hoping to continue the momentum. Unfortunately, they'd have back-to-back -back close losses against Utah and Stanford before getting beat pretty badly by Arizona State. The team ended up going 2-5 in 2020, but they were competitive in 6 out of the 7 games, and they got that big program-changing win. Unfortunately, recruiting really wasn't going up, but Jonathan Smith had been hitting the transfer portal hard and developing players. That's why many were cautiously optimistic going into 2021, but they'd have a difficult start. They brought in Colorado quarterback Sam Neuer, but he was benched pretty quickly in favor of Nolan. B.J. Baylor became one of the top running backs in the country, and we also saw the emergence of Trayvon Bradford and Sean Harrison. Oregon State opened up the season on the road against Purdue, and while they did have a chance late, they ended up losing 30-20. After that, though, they'd go on a tear. They beat Hawaii and Idaho before beating USC on the road 45-27. This was the first time Oregon State had a winning record in quite a long time, and they followed it up with a close victory over Washington. The Beavers were now 4-1, but the team was not quite there yet to put on a huge run. They went on the road and lost to Washington State before coming home and beating Utah. At this point, the team was 5-2, and then they had a couple of bad losses. They lost on the road to both Cal and Colorado, who are both near the bottom of the Pac-12, and this just sucked. Thankfully, they would bounce back with wins over Stanford and Arizona State, and Smith had now gotten his Beavers to bowl eligibility. They are 7-4 going into the Civil War game, and they ended up losing by about 11 points, but it was a great season. They ended up getting selected to play in the LA Bowl, where they lost to Utah State. No, that wasn't great, but just getting to a bowl was huge. Jonathan Smith had been doing wonders, and had now turned Oregon State into a competitive program. Going into 2022, many picked the Beavers to be in the middle part of the Pac-12. Chance Nolan returned at quarterback, true freshman Damian Martinez has blown up at running back, and Treshawn Harrison and tight end Luke Musgrave became the top two targets. In week one, they get a chance to play against Boise State, as they won 34-17, and the game was never in question. This was a huge win, as Boise ended up getting better as the season went on. After that, Oregon State went on the road against Fresno State, and scored a walk-off touchdown as time expired. This was an incredible moment, and after a win over Montana State, this set up the biggest game at Reeser Stadium in years. Number 7 USC was coming to town, and while that game was close, USC pulled it out 17-14, and this was heartbreaking for the fan base. They wanted to get a big win at home. Luckily, they would get one later, but before that, they'd have a couple more games to play. They got beat badly by number 12 Utah on the road, and then they strung together three straight wins over Stanford, Washington State, and Colorado. 
By the end of October, they were bowl eligible. The Beavers were 6-2 and, and now ranked number 23 in the country for a matchup with Washington. This game ended up being a thriller, but the Huskies would get the better of them, winning 24-21. After getting punched in the mouth, Oregon State would bounce back and has finished the 2022 season on an insane note. They blew out Cal, went on the road and destroyed Arizona State before a huge matchup with number 9 Oregon. The Ducks were one of the hottest teams in the country, and after having a commanding second half lead, it looked like all hope was lost. The Beavers, though, went on an absolute tear. Fueled by some Oregon mistakes, they ended up taking the lead late in the fourth quarter and upset Oregon in the Civil War game 38-34, where the students and the fans rushed the field. This gave Oregon State their ninth win of the season, and by far the biggest win of the Jonathan Smith era. They're now going to have a chance to play for a tenth win, and that is a big deal. Oregon State had only posted two 10-win seasons ever. They had also never beaten a team from the SEC, so getting a chance to play Florida in the Vegas Bowl had a lot on the line. How did they end up doing? Well, they won 30-3, and the game was never in question. While Florida fans and coaches will claim there were a lot of opt-outs, Oregon State was the better team start to finish, and I don't really care who would have played for Florida, Oregon State would have won that game. I wasn't really in love with that matchup to begin with, but Oregon State proved their worth. They had their third 10-win season in program history, they recently extended Jonathan Smith, the hype is back, and Oregon State football is fun. They went from the most dead program in the Pac-12 to now one of the best stories. Jonathan Smith is at the center of this, and he may go down as the figurehead of this program when it's all said and done. I've always been a soft-spoken Oregon State Beavers fan, so this has been fun to watch, and I'm really excited to see what happens in the next few years. But what do you guys think? If you're an Oregon State fan, what do you think of the current program? How did the season happen? And what are your expectations for the future? If you're a fan of another school, be sure to chime in as well, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.